Do you want your gameplay recording to look as crisp and smooth as this? Well, today I've got you with an OBS guide. Come with me. Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Forby. Today we have a OBS recording and streaming settings video for you guys. This is going to be a pretty quick guide, but I'm gonna go in depth with everything that you need to know to get your OBS set straight with good stream quality and with good recording quality. So getting into it here, you'll see, you know, we I'm recording with our OBS right now here. Um, but the important stuff that we're going to go over today is pretty much every list here in your settings tab, uh, in your controls area. So to get started here, we're going to go under general. Now with these general settings, you can change your theme to just about any of these themes here. They'll all be different looks for you. Um, but I say with Yami personally, just because it's kind of nice in the eyes, it's like a, a neutral, darker color. Um, you know, we like dark mode around here now updates, you know, automatically checking for updates is always good. You'll usually want to run a, like an actual stable release and not a beta release because you can ha experience crashes and that could mean lost footage or, you know, stopped streams, etc. You don't really want that. Now, the only other thing that I'll really go over here in this is the source alignment snapping. Usually you want this enabled so that your, uh, your sources will snap to different areas on your screen when you're trying to create your stream layout. Um, this is good to have. You can change the sensitivity for how much you want to snap or how much you don't want to snap. And then uh, system tray, I have this enabled. And then I actually want this to minimize to my system tray when I'm started. This is kind of personal preference, but um, it's just so when you open it, it's not going to open immediately or like in your face. But that's kind of all that's important here. Uh, most of this should be default settings in the general tab. Now for your stream tab, um, this isn't really important. This is just connecting your account to whatever streaming service you want to use. Now I will say I use Twitch personally, but you can also go to like, uh, go to custom and set up like a, a specific server to go into. Like if you're using restream and want to stream to multiple platforms, that's the way you would do that. And then what I do is I check this ignore streaming service setting recommendations so that it doesn't cap out at this, uh, this number here. So you can actually go over that and it'll ignore the recommendations. Now, the output tab is what's important. So this is what we're going to be going over with the streaming and recording tab. And I'll even go over replay buffer with you guys as well. Uh, but for streaming, I am on a single PC setup personally right now. So I am running a pretty high end system, but this is going to be for just about every system with explanations as to why. Uh, now for streaming, we're going to go with CBR rate control here. We do not want to use CQP VBR lossless because there is a cap, at least for Twitch. Uh, as to what bitrate you can run. So we wanna go CBR and we wanna go 8,000. Now, if you are a Twitch affiliate, you can put this to 6,000 and still be fine. But I will say that Twitch servers will cap most affiliates at 6,000 kilobytes. Uh, however, if you are on you know, a good server and they can give you that bandwidth, they will give you the 8,000 kilobytes per second bandwidth capability so that your stream is actually a higher quality. Now for partners, 8,000 is what you should be running at all times, because with being a Twitch partner, you will always get that 8,000 kilobyte stream, uh, but affiliates, it's kind of hit and miss. Now keyframe interval, you can have this set to two or zero seconds. I have it set to zero seconds personally. Preset, I have set to slower so that I have a better stream quality. Now you can set this to slowest, slow or medium. I highly recommend being in P5 through P7 for the for the quality aspect of things, especially if you are playing games on like mouse and keyboard, you're flicking around really fast and it may be hard to encode. Now tuning, I have this set on low latency. It's a nice middle ground between the quality and the ultra low latency preset. And then multi-pass mode, two passes with quarter resolution and high profile. Now, the other things here, you don't really have to worry about too much. Some of these are newer settings that have never really been affected, but I have max B frame set to two and GPU set to zero with psycho visual tuning enabled. Now that's what our streaming settings are gonna be here. Uh, the important takeaways are the rate control and bit rate. This is the stuff that's going to matter the absolute most. Uh, and then your video encoder, you generally wanna have this on NVENC H.264. You can have it set to HEVC, but I recommend using H.264 over everything else. And then audio encoder, FFmpeg AAC is what I run personally. This is has never caused issues for me. Generally, pretty high quality audio from what, I, from what I've seen. Now, the recording tab, um, this is also some advanced stuff, right? So uh, we're gonna go over some differences between the streaming and the recording side. No, it's not too much different, but it's different enough to where we wanna talk about it. So recording settings, obviously your recording path, this is where you're going to set the recordings to go to when you're finished with them. Um, you would just hit this browse here and then go to whatever file path you want that to be back with. 
Uh, recording format, generally I run MP4. Now I will say if you have power issues or you know, you're recording something that's really important and you wanna make sure that no matter what happens, your PC blue screens, your power goes out, whatever it may be, um, you can set this to FLV and that file format will actually uh, keep writing even if the recording is like canceled or corrupted, um, it will keep the footage that you've already recorded. With M MP4, that's not always the case. In fact, most times it's not the case. It'll just corrupt the file and it'll be lost forever, unfortunately. Now, audio encoder, same thing, FFmpeg AAC. Audio tracks, you can split your audio tracks, but we won't be going over that today. I don't split mine personally. Rescale app output, I have this set to bilinear. This can be put to Langsos. I do recommend using Langsos, but I use bilinear personally. And then I have this set to 1440p because I plan a 1440p monitor. Now I'll go over the reason for that and like the way that it works in a little bit when we go over to our video tab. Um, but there will be an explanation as to why this rescale output is 1440. Now going down, the important stuff. So what's different between streaming and recording is that recording, I use CQP instead of CBR. Now you could use CBR and set it to 50,000 or 80,000, 110,000, whatever you want for a bit rate to have high quality. Uh, but most times it's easier to just use CQP and then set this anywhere from like 16 to 20, 21. Um, I'm gonna put up a, a picture on screen here to show you the differences between quality and quality loss with CQP levels. I have this set to 19. It's right at the range of where you're gonna start losing quality, but it's still extremely high quality with a very high bit rate uh, in final recording. And it looks absolutely fantastic and crispy for that 1440p or even 1080p gameplay. Now, keyframe interval is still gonna be zero, same as what it was on the streaming tab. Preset, we're gonna go with P6. Now, I believe, yeah, I'm on P6 on both streaming and recording. It works great for me. I don't have any issues personally. If it's starting to cause some issues with encoding on your computer, because it just doesn't have enough power, you can make this go to slow or medium and you'll lose a little bit of quality, but you'll have better performance overall. Now, tuning, I have this set on low latency as well. Uh, same thing on the streaming side. I kind of matched the settings as much as I could beside the rate control and CQ level. Um, but multi-pass, we'll have two passes again, and profile main, same thing with cycle vi visual tuning enabled at GPU zero and max B frames two. Now audio, this stuff is not very important unless you're splitting your audio tracks. Now, like I said, I'm not splitting my audio tracks, so it's not that important. Um, but if you are, then you want to have your tracks laid out here in your audio bit rate, either needs to be 160 or 320. Now 320 is what I highly recommend just for the highest audio quality you can get. Um, but for most people, this won't make much of a difference because a lot of people aren't splitting their audio tracks, especially for recording. Now replay buffer, this is a very, very simple setup, okay? Um, if you use shadow play or anything along those lines, this is pretty much the exact same thing, but it's clipping directly off of your OBS. So what I run with replay buffer, when I use replay buffer is 120 seconds, and then I set this to 4096 for four gigabytes of RAM uh, dedicated for replay buffer. This is how I use replay buffer setup on my OBS. It has always worked for me. If you need to use a different clipping software for your gameplay and shadow play is not working for you or whatever you're using for recording, OBS replay buffer is the way to go, 100%. Now audio, this, isn't super important, but it is very important. So global audio devices is what we care about here. Now, general sample rate, this needs to be 48,000 kilohertz or uh, 44.1 thousand. That, uh, that is the setting that you want for that. I have mine set to 48 because of my audio setup, but some people may need to have that at 44.1. Now for desktop audio, I will have mine set to system. I am on a GoXLR, so I have a bunch of different outputs for my sound. Um, but you want this to be your system sounds or your gameplay sounds or both, depending on what you're using. So I would set this to simple and then mic and auxiliary audio. This is your microphone. I would set this to broadcast stream mix. Now, if you are a streamer, you have a go XLR and you don't want all of your discord noises and your music and all that stuff to be in here, then you would set this to chat mic and that would just isolate your audio based off of your routing table with your go XLR. So you can see my stream mix, you know, I have everything here but with my chat mic i have chat music and game completely off of it it's only my microphone now everything else here meters you know this is just for what you're seeing meter wise i don't have any meters but you can set this to you know fast and sample peak this stuff isn't necessarily um important on the audio tab now the video tab is where we get kind of frisky all right so base canvas res resolution this comes back to that recording output resolution of 1440p 
So generally your base canvas resolution needs to be whatever your monitor's resolution is or whatever your windows resolution is set to that you're playing in or using your computer in at all times. So with me, I have a 1440p monitor. So I run my base canvas resolution down to 1440. Now in the output recording, this is why I have this set to 1440p. So that way my recordings are 1440p. However, my streams with the output scales resolution is in 936p. Now, the reason that you want this to be 1664 by 936, especially if you are an affiliate, I don't usually recommend this for partners, but if you're an affiliate, 936p is the way to go. This is a, a resolution that is still divisible by uh, the 16 to nine re aspect ratio. So you're still able to keep that same, you know, widescreen picture. Um, but you're not going to the full 1080p and you're still keeping an extremely high quality, but also, you know, allowing your bit rate to fill those pixels a little bit more. Um, now downscale filter, I have this set to buy cubic, but like I said, Lanxos is also a great option for you to set this to. Um, and then common FPS values, you can have this set to 30, 60, or you can even set this to 120. Now, if you want to have 120 FPS, you need to change this common FPS value to integer FPS value and then make it 120 there. And then you can record at 120 FPS generally with no issues. Now, I will say that if you're recording with 120 FPS, be careful. Um, you know, when you get all of this stuff set up, make sure that you do a test recording, make sure that everything is working for you because there are some PCs that this may be super high quality for, and you're going to need to adjust some settings to be able to make it work. So if you are in that situation where your PC just cannot run these settings, it's a little bit too much, which it shouldn't be because of the, the settings that I have set up are pretty versatile in terms of, you know, how much power you need for them. Um, you can increase the CQ level from, you know, 19 to 21, 22. You can keep raising that until you get a, a solid video. That's the quality that you're looking for. Now, the times where you're going to experience that issue the most is when you're playing at a, or you're recording at 120 FPS. So if you are recording at 120 and you experience that problem, try dropping it back down to 60, see how it acts, go from there. Uh, and if you have any other questions, be sure to drop them down in the comments. I'll answer as much as I possibly can. Um, but in terms of our settings here, um, that's pretty much all I've got for you guys. I will say that going into the advanced tab and going to process priority and putting this to above normal or high is a good idea, um, but it can cause some issues when you're running games and OBS at the same time with them conflicting over how much power they want. Um, so I have this set to normal personally, but it's entirely up to you. You can put this normal or um, above normal or high as well. Now, everything else here is kind of just a set, um, you know, default setting. Stream delay, if you do want to turn on delay for your stream, you can turn this on and then you can set the duration in seconds and then automatically reconnect. This is for if your stream dies, you're able to, you know, reconnect automatically with 25 retries in every two seconds. But that's all for our settings video today, guys. Um, I didn't go over hotkeys or anything because I don't have any set up personally. But if you guys want hotkeys, you know, this is all personal preference and up to you. But I appreciate you guys so much. Let me know if you have any questions and in, in, down in the comments. I'll be sure to try and answer as many as I possibly can. Um, but if you have been watching my content and you've been wondering how you know I get the video quality that I get, this is exactly how. Follow this guide and you'll look just like my gameplay. Love you guys. Trust the video, some love. I appreciate you guys so much. Have a great day and enjoy these settings. Peace out.